All right, during our last lecture, we looked at Jacobi method for solving uh, uh, linear equations. And we applied the, the Jacobi method to solving the discretized Poisson's equation. We ran 100 iterations. We see something, a solution that looks qualitatively like what we expect, the exact solution. But there is still a difference. We ran 1,000 iterations. Now it's pretty much the same as the Poisson's equation. We also apply the same method to the 2D Poisson's equation. And after many iterations, we see the difference between the true solution and the iterative solution we get, or the solution error, is more or less like a very smooth function. right? So today, let's perform an analysis to see why that is the case. In the next lecture, we figured out that the solution error, ek, that is defined as the difference between the iterative solution at iteration k minus the exact solution. It satisfies an equation that is ek plus 1 is equal to d inverse minus l plus u times ek. While this whole matrix here is defined as the Jacobi iteration matrix. This equation is derived by subtracting the iteration equation for uk, which is uk plus 1, uh, uh, d is equal to l plus u minus times uk plus the right hand side b from the equation that is satisfied by the exact solution, which is uh, this. So if we subtract these two equations, we derive an equation for the error. And now we started looking at what is the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this iteration matrix. If we can represent this iteration matrix using eigenvectors and eigenvalues, V is a matrix whose columns are the eigenvectors of the matrix, and lambda is a diagonal matrix whose entries are the eigenvalues of the matrix and v inverse, that's an eigenvalue decomposition of the matrix. Then we know that ek would then be equal to v times lambda to the kth power times v inverse of e0. This is simply by applying this iteration matrix again and again, and the v would cancel with the v inverse uh, when you multiply two of the same matrices. So you get lambda to the power of k. We are going to see that whatever lambda is closest to 1 is going to converge the slowest. If there is a lambda that is equal to 1 or greater than 1, the iteration won't converge at all. If lambda is all of the lambdas are less than 1, then Jacobi is going to converge. And if there is even a single mode, a single lambda that is very close to 1, then Jacobi would converge slowly. And how slow would it converge? Would depend on how close lambda is to 1. For example, if a particular lambda, let's say lambda 1, is the eigenvalue closest to just 1 is equal to 1 minus some small epsilon, which means there is one eigenvalue very, very close to 1. Then, for in order for ek to decrease by a significant factor, we have to put enough k such that, so let's say if I want e to be, uh, ek to be about half of e0, that would require a k such that 1 minus epsilon to the k is about a half. Do we know an approximation to this number, 1 minus epsilon to a large, so 1 minus a small number to a large power? Does anybody know a good approximation to what that is? 1 minus k epsilon. Pardon? 1 minus k epsilon. 
one minus k epsilon. Uh, that is a good approximation when k is small but epsilon. Uh, so when epsilon is small but k is not very large. If both epsilon is very small and k is very large, do we know a better approximation to this? Okay, so, so let me tell you. Uh, 1 minus epsilon can be approximated by e to the minus epsilon, right? So 1 minus epsilon to the kth power can be approximated by uh, e to the minus epsilon k. So that captures kind of the exponential uh, decay of this iteration while uh, epsilon is a small number. So in order for 1 minus epsilon to the kth power to, to be small enough, for the, for the conversions to be visible, k needs to be on the order of 1 over epsilon for uh, e to the minus epsilon k to be visible. Okay. Or in fact, uh, exactly it would be log 2 uh, in order for, for e to the minus epsilon k to be about 1 half. All right. So a smaller epsilon means a proportionally bigger k for the for the convergence. So if if I if I move the eigenvalue from the largest eigenvalue from 0.99 to 0.999, so one more nine, means you approximately requires how many more iterations to converge. According to that, if lambda goes from 0.99 to 0.999 how much bigger of a k is required? 10 times bigger, yeah, that's right. All right, so now we understand how uh, the eigenvalues and eigen, uh, is gonna influence the Jacobi iteration matrix. Let's figure out what we are seeing on Monday, which is application of the Jacobi iteration to Poisson's equation. So we are, we are going to analyze the one-dimensional case, but you can apply the same argument to the two-dimensional case. So for the one-dimensional case, the matrix A we have is uh, 1 over delta x squared of minus 2, etc., minus 2, and 1, 1, etc. This is our iteration matrix with zero boundary conditions. My D is of course going to be uh, minus two times identity, right? So that's uh, times one over x squared. And my L plus U would be a matrix that is zero on the diagonal and uh, the same one on the lower and upper diagonals. So the Jacobi iteration matrix, which is minus D inverse, oh, I forgot to multiply 1 over delta x squared. The Jacobi iteration matrix 1 minus D inverse times L plus U would be equal to the delta axis cancel and then the minus cancels with this minus uh, in front of 2. So D inverse times L plus U would be 0, still on the diagonal, and half on the upper and lower diagonals. Okay, so what is the eigenvalue decomposition of this matrix? Well, of course, we can go to MATLAB and figure that out. But there is also an analytical way of figuring out the eigenvalue and eigenvectors. And particularly in this case, we have seen enough probably um, finite difference operators to know that the eigenvectors are sinusoidals. Okay. So the eigenvectors of this matrix is going to be, uh, let me say vi is the eigen, is the ith, uh, let me see, already, I want to use i as the index, so let me write uh, vij, which is exactly the ith entry of that eigenvector matrix would be the value of the jth eigenvector at the ith grid point, right? So that's the ith row and jth column. The column is, corresponds to which eigenvalue it is. The row corresponds to which entry the eigenvector it is. 
So the the ith entry would correspond to a sinusoidal wave. Sine of so when when j is equal to one, it'll be a single sinusoidal wave. So it should be i times j times pi divided by um, the length which is uh, m plus 1. So if I draw that, this is i which is the index and this is the vij. When j is equal to 1, the sine wave goes from uh, the, the argument of the sine wave when i goes from 1 to n would go from about 0 to about pi. So the first eigenvalue would be something like this. And remember, this is the mode. This is very like the mode we saw in the error, in the ek, as we take k to be very large, right? We were, uh, you probably remember the two-dimensional case. When I plot the error, the error looks like large in the middle, and zero on the boundaries, but it's a very smooth function. It turns out to be a sine wave in the x direction multiplied by another sine wave in the y direction. That corresponds to the largest, uh, to the eigenvector corresponding to the first eigenvalue of the matrix in 2D. And our second our second mode would correspond to a sign with j equal to 2. So the argument of the sign would go from 0 to 2 pi. When j is equal to 3, I would have a mode 3 sine wave that goes like that, etc., etc. And then we can figure out the corresponding lambda j. If we if we apply, if we plug in this Vij into that matrix, what I would be looking at, uh, what the eigenvalue would, would be, is the ratio between sine of i minus 1j pi divided by n plus 1 plus sine of i plus 1j pi divided by m plus 1 over 2 because that is the average between one grid point and uh, the left neighbor and the right neighbor. That is the action of the matrix on one of the eigenvectors. Divided by the magnitude of the eigenvector itself, ij pi over m plus 1. All right. Okay. So, if you work out what this is, uh, the best way to work this out is to represent this sine wave as a complex exponential. So if you do that, we can see that uh, the value is half of e to the minus j pi and the complex number. I don't have this, so okay. So. So this this i I'll use both i to represent the complex uh, the the imaginary unit imaginary plus e to the j pi uh, both i which is the imaginary. Uh, so if you add that up, that'll be cosine of you get two cosine cosine of j pi. Okay, so cosine of j pi is the corresponding eigenvalue to this eigenvector. Oh, j pi, sorry, j pi, I forgot to divide by this m plus 1. So all of this has m plus 1 in it. Uh, cosine j pi divided by m plus 1. OK, so, so cosine of this j pi divided by m plus 1. So for the red eigenvector uh, corresponding to a single bump, that is the largest uh, corresponding to the largest eigenvalue we saw yesterday. The corresponding eigenvalue is cosine of j equal to 1 times pi divided by n plus 1. 